Hello, my name is Tomasz Poszczek and I would like to welcome you to the first video of a series around Power Tool Agents for Microsoft Teams. Now, just a short word of introduction. The Power Tool Agents is nothing new, right? This is a tool that we already know. It, it used to be a standalone version and this standalone version still exists. So we can still create uh, just public facing bots, chatbots using the Power Tool Agents. However, with the latest addition to Microsoft Teams that was announced during Microsoft Ignite 2020, so the project Oakdale, which is just a free version of common data service, so the relational database, users in Microsoft Teams were given a tool set to actually create business applications and workflows just within Microsoft Teams. And everything is under the license of Microsoft Teams. So if you're not going to use any kind of premium features or if you don't want to publish your bot to public facing website, therefore everything you do, everything you create is actually covered by the Microsoft Teams license. The project Oakdale is nothing more than just a relational database that is a fundament for everything that we would like to create within Microsoft Teams. So flows with Power Automate, applications with Power Apps, and chatbots with Power Virtual Agents. And in this series, I just like to walk you through what is Power Virtual Agents, how to use them, how to create your bots, how to create uh, conversations, how to use Power Automate with Power Virtual Agents, and so on and so on. The first topic, the first video that you're watching right now, is focused on, well, actually, how to onboard, how to start with Power Virtual Agents. So let me show you. Once you start Microsoft Teams and you don't see anything apart from that regular interface that we already know, you need to click this ellipsis icon, and then under the ellipsis icon, you will either find Power Virtual Agents icon ad hoc, already or if you can't find it here simply type in here power in the search box and then one of the results that you will be able to see should be power virtual agents if you can't see it then possibly your microsoft teams admin turn it off so that it is not available for you to use within microsoft teams and then actually there is nothing you can do apart from asking your microsoft teams admin to turn it on but if you're lucky enough then you should simply see this application in here. So click it. Now, one of the good practices is that once you add an application that you're planning to use frequently, simply right click on it and select, select pin so that it will not disappear once you navigate away from it. Now, once you open the Power Tool Agents application, the first thing you will see is this landing page. This gives you all the information that you actually require, that you actually need to onboard with the new software. So you have the links to Microsoft communities, you have links to videos, you have links to some Q&A and documentation. But where the party starts is actually either when you hit the Start Now button or when you navigate to Chatbots. So first let me show you what is hidden under the Chatbots tab. Basically, this is a list of all the teams that the user, you, as the one who is browsing it, has an access to and therefore a list of all the chatbots that you're actually able to edit and contribute and collaborate on. Basically, the project Oakdale is structured this way that the entities, the data, is split across all the teams that are using specific solutions. So if you're creating power apps in a specific team, if you're creating a flow in a specific team, then contents of those um, solutions are going to be stored in the entities of the project Oakdale related to the specific team. By that, it means that any user of that specific team is actually able to explore, to browse what has been created on the project audio under their team, and they can as well contribute and collaborate if something is shared with them. So for example, if you are sharing the application with a specific user or a flow, then they will be also able to contribute. With Power Virtual Agents, the thing is a little, a little bit different because here, actually anyone who has an access to the team, who is a member of a team, can actually edit that bot and collaborate with you on creation of this uh, of this chatbot. So now, once you are under the chatbots, you can start your bot, you can start creation of your bot by hitting this new button, or you can go again to the home tab and hit the start now button. So I'll just start from here. Now the first thing that you have to do right now is actually just like a team where you want to provision that bot because, well, as said, this is everything happening in specific teams, in specific uh, areas of Microsoft Teams. So it just cannot be created like nowhere or in the space. Um, so for this purpose, I'll select the sub team. 
or maybe the US sales, or maybe the sub team. So anyway, once I was clicking through the teams, uh, you might have noticed that for some teams, there is this information displayed. Let me just show you. Where is that? For example, um, yeah, in US sales. So that if I am the first person who is creating a bot, a flow, a power up within that team, then actually there has to be a structure for example, project Oakdale, entities, and other things, so that it is possible then to create these solutions. And so if you're the first person, as I would be in this case, you would actually need to wait a little bit longer until this bot is provisioned, until all those structures that the bot requires to be run is pro are provisioned. But because I don't want to actually wait uh, that long, I'll simply go onto the Contoso and hit continue. So I'll create my new bot in here. Now, once you are in within that team, once you are in that environment where you can create a Power Tool agent, the first thing you have to do is to give it a name. What is also important is that this name is also going to be used as a display name. So once you start chatting with a bot, you'll see its display name as the name actually of the person of the thing with which you're uh, having the conversation. So like with your colleague, right? The name and the last name. This is going to be the name of the bot in this case. So just try to make it professional, try to make it really official, not just like my test bot. I mean, you can do that for your own purposes, but once you decide to create a bot that is going to really serve your customers, your employees, your colleagues, try to use a name that actually describes what the bot is created for, what is its job, and that it looks really professional, all right? Then what you can also do is to select a language in which the bot is going to work. And it doesn't actually mean only that the information the bot is displaying, the messages the bot is displaying are, well, translated and displayed in that specific language, but it also means that all the artificial intelligence that is working underneath the Power Tool agent, so the one that is actually trained to discover what the conversation is about, what user can mean, uh, how to extract specific entities from the, from the sentences, all these um, artificial intelligence solutions, concepts, mechanisms are also going to work for this chosen language. There are several languages already GA. Some of them are in preview. There used to be as well some of them in experimental version. However, they already turn into preview, so uh, we can try and, and test them on our own. But for this demo purpose, I'll stay with the English version. And now the body is provisioned. So let me briefly introduce you the interface. So the first page that you will see is that one that is so-called the landing page, the home page of your bot. And the next thing is the navigation on the left. So you can uh, navigate between topics, and it is publishing, uh, sorry, analytics, publishing, and some settings. So let me just briefly go through each of these. The topics is something I will describe in my next video. Basically, this is something that actually drives the conversations, the, the chats within the bots. Then the entities, it's something that is also driven by the artificial intelligence. Its purpose is to help you extract specific kind of information from the answer that the user gives. So once you ask a question to the user, hey, can you provide me with your email? And then you said that the, that the outcome of that question should be an email type, then even if the user answers with a full sentence, like my uh, email is Thomas at .eu, then the bot will still be able to extract just the email value from that sentence. The same thing could happen with, for example, the age. So if you ask user, what is your age? Or maybe what is the number of, uh, of uh, something, like what is the age of your dog or what is the age of your car? then even if user answers to the question in a full sentence, or even, even if they don't use the whole number, then still the bot is going to be able to extract just a whole number of value and then save it so that later in conversation, the variable that is going to be used to store that answer of the user is going to actually hold only that numeric value uh, extracted from the full sentence. So these are the entities. And then the analytics is going to show you how your bot is performing. So how many conversations it already had, 
what is the overall experience of the users, uh, what, is, what is the sentiment, so if the users are um, satisfied with the conversations or maybe if they are not satisfied, which topics perform good, which performs bad, like um, which are ending always with a failure, which are ending always with a success, success, and maybe which conversations never ended. So possibly users were possibly uh, like bored or they hit a bottleneck and they weren't able to just go through. There is also information about the billing. However, as long as you're staying within these features, these functionalities that are not premium, everything here is going to show you zero. Now then there is a publishing. The publishing is also something I'll talk about in my one of the next videos. So that's the one that actually lets you to publish your bot and then share it with either colleagues of your team or with, uh, with all the colleagues within your organizations that anyone within Microsoft Teams will be able to use your bot. And lastly, there are settings. So here you're able actually to change the display name of your bot. So even if you do use an unprofessional name in the first place, you are still able to change it as well as the icon. You can as well find your channels. So for example, if you're doing your bot, if you're creating your bot and you'd like to publish it elsewhere apart from Microsoft Teams, and you can see those diamonds here in the top corner, it always states these are premium. So just be aware not to do that. Then the security lets you to either uh, select if you'd like to let this access to uh, be for specific users, right? So that is also this uh, information who should be able to discover the bot. Then uh, what should be the authentication method of that bot? So should it be working in like the SSO mode for all the users within the organization? Or maybe you don't actually require the bot to know the user's context, so without any authentication. Or maybe you'd like to um, as well ask users to re-authenticate using OAuth 2.0 provider like Azure AD, so that in this case, the bot will also have extended information about the user and will be, for example, able to call graph API in the context of the user. If you're interested in that, simply uh, navigate to all of my YouTube videos there is a video around the user context in Power Tool Agents for Microsoft Teams where I'm really deeply describing how this functionality works, how to configure it, and then how to call Microsoft Graph uh, API in context of that user uh, with that user's permissions. And uh, lastly, there is also skills. Now, skills is also something that helps you to extend the capabilities, the basic capabilities of your Power Tool Agents by adding a pre-built or pre-created developed pieces of logic built on top of the bot framework in Azure. However, as you can read here, it is also something that requires premium license, so you can't actually do that. In the end, skills is something that really requires a developer because this is something you need to code in Visual Studio. So that is something uh, level up, level higher. All right, so thank you very much for watching this video. That was a brief introduction to what is Power Tool Agents, how to use it. So see you in my next video where I'll describe what are the topics. If you like this video, then obviously subscribe, leave a comment below and thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time.